Now we'll make a little detour to check that the mathematical property we want our random numbers to satisfy is actually satisfied. But if you don't really care, don't want to spend the time or don't have the time to spend, you can feel free to skip the next video because you won't miss anything that's relevant for the implementation. But if you want to stay with us, let's start by defining, let's start by generating a bunch of supposedly normally distributed random numbers, let's say 100 of them. Now let's use Apple cards to see how we can create a histogram of things. Apple cards, as an APL card, is a website you can check to get to find snippets of code that do interesting things. And so I just took the first one that seems relevant to generate an histogram and it feels like the N here, which stands for num, is probably going to be the bins. You need to give the histogram, and so let's define this function. And so let's start by binning our random numbers into, well, their bins. And for that, we will define, let's say, bins from minus 5 to 5 in half unit intervals. So maybe, how can one do that? Let divide by two. Also, if you can't follow along with the APL itself, don't worry. I think the, the interesting part here is to see everything happen. You can then later study what's going on. So let's do this and then let's subtract 10 from this. Oops. Okay, so this gives the bins. And now what we can do is to fit everything into the bins, so we do that with interval index of these are the bins. So basically, the last number in V goes into bin 10. That's what that means. Now we are going to cheat a little bit when we use the key operator to creates the bin count and the way we do that is by well first we get the bin in here but now what we're going to do is append all the numbers we care about we're going to append them in here and now when we get the counts which would be the number of elements in the right argument we're going to subtract one to account for the little Cheating we just did, and then we create the histogram. Okay, not too bad. This is, of course, um, flipped as to what you would usually see. Okay, so this is closer to what you would normally see. Okay, because the this symbol here is taller than wider, it looks even less like a bell curve, so let's keep this like that. Not exactly a bell curve, but as you should know, things only really approximate these distributions as the numbers get really, really big. So maybe let's let's do something else. Let's create instead of 100 numbers, let's get maybe 10,000 numbers, 10,000 random numbers, and let's repeat everything. So we got v. We have the same bins. Let's bin everything again. And now when creating the histogram, instead of having one character per element in there, because we just created 100 elements more, let's divide everything by 100 to keep more or less the same scale, and then let's round it down. You see, you get now a nicer bell curve. And as you increase the number of random numbers you generate, you will get a smoother curve. Actually, let's do the following. Let's define a scale, and now we can do everything, but let's do instead scale times 100, so let's say the base, the baseline is 100, and then you bin everything, and then Instead of dividing, instead of having 100 divided by, you have the scale. 
and so you can simply change the scale and execute all sorry all of these lines together and as the scale increases this gets smoother and smoother so yes we got this correct the wikipedia page was correct and now we can move on with our neural network implementation first let me clean this actually i won't clean this so we can make the other viewers jealous when they see this nice histogram and they didn't take part in it so see you in the next video